guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm going to answer some of your questions, like what do I think is the most beautiful and reliable movement, and is this very inexpensive brand spanking some very large high horology brands like MBNF? All that and more in today's video. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Patek Philippe 5296 sector dial, white gold, one of my favorite watches in my collection and one of the most beautiful Patek Philippe's ever made. Uh, if you do like it, I do have the rose gold version for sale on Delray watch. I just noticed I forgot to set the time on this. Oh well, right after the video. <laughs> and also guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com, a bunch of new watches in stock as we're updating about 20 to 30 pieces a day, including an Omega Speedmaster from the moon to Mars, one of the most popular and sought after limited edition Speedmasters. We have the Glasuta Original Sport Evolution Panorama Date, the precursor to their famous CQ, and some say a much higher end sports watch than the CQ, very rarely seen, and we have one available. And one of the rarest watches and highest end watches we've ever had the pleasure of offering, a Langeheine Johan. Langeheine is a very small German brand. Um, they make, if I had to guess, under 200 watches a year. This is an entirely handmade watch, handmade movement, enamel dial, and the Johan is part of their history. It's one of the very early production models. Super hard to get, extremely high end, and you will never find a better price than you will right now at Delray Watch. Anyway, all that and more at DelrayWatch.com, the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch. Link in the description below. Anyway, guys, you know the spiel. These are the questions you asked me on Instagram. Uh, about once a week, a Q&A picture pops up. When you see that picture, feel free to ask your question. When I get enough questions, I take the picture down. Please do not DM me. I do not check them. In no particular order, we start with Max Sabatka. And he says, Howdy, Fed. What is your favorite model from A. Langenzona? I love the cabaret in white gold. The cabaret is beautiful, very underappreciated, but for me, Lange comes down to two watches. Either the typical Lange one, uh, their icon, it's such a beautiful and functional timepiece. But if I had to pick like an all-time favorite, I'd probably go with the Langenzona Datagraph in Platinum. The most beautiful movement I've ever seen, the best chronograph I've ever held, um, the level of finishing, the, the, the 3D aspect of the movement, the button action. Um, I, I, there are very few higher-end watches ever made on Earth than a Datagraph. Um, and I don't know, a Datagraph is definitely something I will have to own uh, at some point. Batman Rules 5472. Hello, I'm wondering what your opinion is the best special edition Speedmaster. So if we're going to go with modern special edition Speedmasters, there's only one that I think matters, and that is the Ed White with the 3 to one movement. Yes, kind of looks like a normal Speedmaster, but there's real substance in this limited production. It's limited production, not limited edition. And it's the 3 to one movement. The old school column wheel chronograph they used to put uh, in the Speedmasters, it's just a much higher end watch, much higher end movement. Yes, it's much more expensive, but the substance here is in the watchmaking, not just a Snoopy on the dial. BGC Bubba. Who, in your opinion, has the most beautiful movement and who has the most reliable? Well, the most beautiful movement for me is definitely Langenzona, as I said, the datagraph, the double split, any of their chronograph movements are gorgeous. And on top of that, they're the most reliable, in my opinion, high horology movements uh, ever made. I've very rarely seen a Lange with a problem. Now, of course, would I consider Rolex more reliable? Sure, 
but a much simpler movement, uh, much less complication, much less finishing, totally different functions. But if we're talking about high horology, then Lange is not only the most beautiful, in my opinion, but also the most reliable, in my opinion. Daniel Gross, 7.3. Fed, do certain in innovative micro brands pose a long term threat to larger, more established brands by offering similar quality at a much lower price point? Case in point, the Christopher Ward Bel Canto versus similar looking MBNF models at 20x the price. Interesting question. And I I I don't agree, but I see why you would think that. Uh, Christopher Ward is a fantastic watch and the bel canto is a fantastic movement an innovative innovative movement and a movement that offers fantastic bang for the buck however where i disagree is you said similar quality and i don't consider christopher ward to be in the same universe as mbnf yes they're both watches and yes christopher ward offers a, a, a beautiful watch but mbnf is much more complicated. It's the hand finishing is million times better than any finishing Christopher Ward does. Um, the price you're paying for the MBNF is because of the handiwork. And I think the customer that wants the MBNF and can afford the MBNF, they might like a Bel Canto, but the Bel Canto is not going to replace anything made by MBNF. And that's not a negative thing towards the Belcanto. It's it's a positive towards the MBNF. Um, you're paying for hours and hours and hours of labor. Now, is it worth the price? Only you, the customer, can decide. The Belcanto is definitely worth worth the price. I think I think, but in my opinion, uh, you cannot compare a Belcanto to a, an MBNF. They're not the same thing. They're not the same quality. They're not the same anything apart from a watch, in my opinion. And then last but not least, Watch Lounge Chris. What is your favorite watch brand? Now, this is a loaded question because I love all watch brands. I love FP Jorn. Uh, I worked for Cartier and I love their product. Um, I love Patek Philippe. I'm becoming much, much more of a Patek lover lately. But for me, my heart lies with Moser. I love everything about them, the designs, the quality, the price point, the leadership, the executive team, um, the marketing message. It's just at this moment in time, and, and for the past four or five years, Moser has definitely been my favorite brand, and I don't see that changing any time soon. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Take care.